Hello, Internet. I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine is Serious Business. I believe this is episode 310 on the eve of the Brexit. Welcome <laughs> to our discussion we're all, of two we're Oregon all keyed wines. In, yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we're discussing Oregon wine tonight, but we are keyed into the uh, Brexit thing, so it's like... Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if we're going to buy pounds tomorrow or not. Yeah. I don't know, probably like... Definitely like should have shorted the, the British pound. Uh, anyway... Yeah. We're talking about Oregon wine. Yeah. And uh, our friends at Elk Cove were kind enough to send Dan some samples. They contacted you, I think. Yep. And we're like, hey, we got these Pike Road wines. These are, uh, what would you say, like basically one tier below the Elk Cove wines? Yep. Sort entry, of thing? Le- entry level entry stuff. Level. They even say on the back, this is from some of, uh, for, some from, ah, sorry. They even say on the back, this is from some of their vineyards that aren't the prime ones that go into the single vineyard bottlings. I think, you know, if you're a fan of Oregon wines, you've seen their, you know, Mount Richmond and other great single vineyards. Yeah. You know, what what are some of the other single vineyard pinots? Um, I would say they're, man, they're, the favorites for me are their La Bohem, their Roosevelt, um, the Five Mountain is really good. Um, they have, I think, five or six vineyards that they own outright. And then they buy a lot of fruit. Part of the reason I've, I've been a club member at Elk Cove for a lot of years, mm-hmm. and part of the reason I'm still a club member there is because they produce so, such a wide amount of con, like content, essentially. Like they produce nine or ten single vineyard bottlings, and and the only way you can get like five of those is being a club member, and that's kind of special. Yeah. Um, Very reasonably priced club. Some yeah. of the friendliest people in the valley. So if you're new yeah. to Oregon wines, I always tell people if you're going on a tour, swing by Elk Cove. I'll just throw this out there because I mean, like, yeah. this is gonna be a kind of a short show since we're two, doing two bottles. This is like I end up telling people this wine route. I work, I work at Intel. There's a, a lot of people. They figure out I'm a wine person and they say, "Where should I go to drink wine?" Yeah. Really simple. I'm like, go to Highway 47 and Highway is eight. That goes like uh, it's uh, six. Is it six? I think. It's no, it's uh, it's the one going out of Hillsboro. Oh, sure. Okay. I think it's eight. Yeah. Um, and it crosses. Basically, there's, it's a Grand Lodge um, yeah. minimums right there. You go south. You hit Sake 1, if you're that kind of person. Um, you head south. You hit Elk Cove. You go to Gaston. You hit Elk Cove and Kramer. Um, those two places. Elk Cove does, like, big Pinots. Kramer's got the sparkling wines and some hot whites, good Pinots. You head south from there. You go to Carlton. Eat some lunch. Mm. You hit Seven of Hearts to finish. Strong. I, I'm like strong. Basically, uh, I give them like a, a list of like the the places I would say in the, in uh, in Carlton, in and around Carlton. But really, Seven of Hearts is where you finish because that's like a chocolate there. He's got fantastic wine. Anyway, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's a good tour. Yeah, really solid stuff. So, this, so they emailed us about this. This is the Pike Road label, entry level stuff that they make. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Entry entry level wines that they're making generally not something that that you know we're totally interested in you know in pursuing from everybody. But totally. we've been a big fan of Elko for a long time. Interested to see what what they do with it. So so we're like, yeah, so, so send them our way. We'll give them a shot. Yeah, and their their Pinot Gris, I believe, has like made the top one hundred list on Spectator before, right? Or like makes sense. It gets it gets like I I don't know if it's. It might have made the top 100 list once, um, and it gets very high praise, I would say, on a regular basis. Like, their Pinot Gris is consistently, in warm vintage, is one of the best Pinot Gris in the Valley. And, and we like their high-end stuff, but I've had good experiences with their Willamette Valley wines before, too. So, uh, yeah, we got, we got hopes for this. And these are uh, screw and pour, as, as, as Absolutely. it were. And don't, uh, man, I might be wrong on the top 100 thing. I, I might be right on it. I might be wrong on it. Just, just right. leave it at that. Smells like peanut wow. butter. Mega fruity. Big tropical fruits. Um, pineapple. Uh, apple fruits. A little floor, a little bit of that, like, a uh, little, little bit of that, like, citrus peel, like, touch of, touch, suggestion of bitterness on the edge that, that I think is pretty common in a lot of Pinot Gris. Um, honestly, it can be a little overwhelming for me. It, it works all right here. I think right in line with what I expect at Pinot Gris at this price point. Yeah, light stone fruits. A hint of, like, almost, like, mango or something yeah. but like big apple fruit Asses, a little it's probably 15s right yeah, 15, yeah 15, that's, that's 15, 15. Good, good year for it right no shortage of ripeness if you were looking for it in 15 yeah kind of round on the back yeah pretty straightforward yeah. Oregon Pinot Gris yeah it is um, definitely just fruity and delicious like the apple flavors I was talking about earlier are very apparent maybe like a hint of like Almost underripe peach. Um, 
lemon citrus. Yep. Uh, but 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 like very overwhelmingly just fruit. Um, the acid is actually the acid's in a very good place, I think, for this. Um, there might have. I agree. Yeah, the acid is is strong, um, and almost actually wow. After. I, I feel like so it's that little bitterness that was suggested on the nose is definitely showing up in the palate. A uh, little bit detrimental for me, but but I think in the yeah. way that is pretty typical for Oregon Pinot Gris. So the I think acid here is really wild, like it's powerful. Yeah, hmm. yeah. So I think if you're generally a right. fan of the style, this this will this will suit you well. Or if you live outside of the state and are curious to see what Oregon Pinot Gris tastes like, this this would be a decent place to start. Check it yes, out. Yes, agreed. Yeah. Uh, this is a fine bottle of wine. Um, I would be really interested to try their 2015 Pinot Gris next to this, just to see what the difference is, right? And now there's um, a selection to that too, right? That's not all of it. And this is not something that, that happened before too, which right. is kind of interesting. Uh, maybe they just had so much fruit in 2015, they decided to do a spinoff or they something. They wouldn't be the only ones to do that. Yeah, that would make right. sense. Um, yeah. In, 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 in warm years, they call them a bumper crop. Sure, yeah. Uh, in Oregon, uh, it's, not, it's not unregular to like see posts like, hey, I've got some fruit. Want to buy it? Please. Want to buy it? Like, want to buy my fruit? Yeah, like, it does happen. I mean, in in, in years where it, there's a high yield, so it's good. So they probably had enough where they could make make a couple different cuts, try yeah. out try out a new label, maybe yeah. get this get get a little more a uh, little what, more onto the market. What do you, do you know what the price point on these is? The Pinot Gris is fourteen dollars a bottle, and the Pinot Noir is nineteen dollars a bottle. Uh, good entry level prices, kind of right in line with what I expect. Yeah, the I mean, at that price point, fourteen dollars a bottle. This is fantastic Pinot Gris, right? Like, if you're just looking for something very fruity. Easy to drink. Um, I think a lot of people would appreciate this and have no problem with it. I think it's fine. Yeah, it's good. Wine. And I think where it's strong too is they've got a really good distribution network. So I think some people maybe Googled and found this or something like that. Like this is, like you said, good representative of of, uh, of Oregon Pinot Gris and a good entry level. Well, look at that color. All right, so we're gonna move on to the uh, the Pinot Noir. This is the 2014, just Willamette Valley Pike Road right. Pinot Noir. Another so, another another high volume year, right? So so. Good, good time to spin off another label again, um, and, and a tough, tough price point. Yeah, nineteen dollars a bottle. Like that twenty dollar price point is like where you're like you got a lot of competition. Yep, and and a lot of terrible Pinot Noir. You can get you can get so much bad Pinot Noir for under twenty dollars. That's true. Um, that that honestly, I, I rarely try. I only will buy Pinot Noir in that price range if I have it at somebody's place or at a tasting room or something. I'm like, oh, this sure. is really solid. But I feel it's too much of a gamble to just take blind shots. So uh, here we are, taking uh, taking blind leaps for you, the viewers. Hmm. It smells like Pinot Noir. It does. Got straightforward, little dark cherries, a little bit of oak, nothing too complex. Nothing yep. really crazy going on. But, but Yeah, strawberries, dark cherries, definitely a hint of oak. Hmm. It almost like yeah, mint. Yeah, sort of knows. yeah, it, it, smells, yeah. it smells nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, straightforward Pinot Noir. Yeah, I mean, totally. I'm going to put this in a very similar, you know, for those of you from the Valley, you know, who are used to buying higher end Pinot Noirs, this isn't going to bring anything to the table, not going to change your mind. No. Um, but I also feel like if, if you're the type of person that goes out, buys some under, under $20 Pinot Noirs every once in a while, wants to try something new, this is a good place to go. Like I, like I said, there's a lot of wine at this price point that has a lot of things I have problems with. This is just nice, straightforward, easy to drink Pinot Noir. It has no faults. Right. I will say that. Like, it's very uh, clean, yep. straightforward, easy drinking Pinot Noir. I think the structural elements are a little more powerful than I was expecting. Uh, for something at this price point, like, it does have a good good amount of tannins and acid, which is really nice. Yeah. Um, fruit flavors aren't terribly long lasting, but the fruit flavors are very... Uh, Present and, and powerful, a big part of the wine. Uh, I wouldn't call it fruit forward, but at the same point, right. it has a lot of fruit. Um, it's a nice wine. Yeah, and it's still but, kind of, it's, but I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it, it is twenty dollars Pinot Noir. It's 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 around that price point. So it's a nice wine. Yeah. So in both places, they deliver about what we expect. Um, yeah. So so nicely done, and I, and I think uh, you know I think there are definitely situations where, uh, where 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 these are good ones to check out, especially. If you're out in the states where you don't get a lot of distribution from Morgan Pinot Noir, you get a chance to see these. Give yeah, it a shot. I, I wonder if that. I wonder if that's the whole thing. Like with Alcove, I mean, these are obviously samples for us. Alcove sent us. Yeah, thank um, you. If Alcove, yeah. yeah, thank you. By the way, um, are they are they moving into other markets or something? Like this is their way to push it. I mean, I've see, I've seen Alcove's 
Willamette Valley, right, in other markets when I've traveled, you know, and I buy it because it's good wine. Um, so maybe this is like their extension or their their second label. Into anyway, sorry, yeah. I'm just rambling. Yeah, trying to start. So. Thanks anyway. Th thanks yeah. again, Delco. We appreciate your support over the years. And yeah, Alexa, what's your favorite Oregon Pinot? I don't have an opinion on that. Yeah, it's, well, it's been dis this thing's been disappointing us all night. Yeah, all night. Uh, so. so, but these wines did not disappoint us. Yeah, it's uh, good stuff. Thanks for watching. Nice, straightforward show. We'll get back into uh, we'll get back kind of into the regular swing of things in the next couple of weeks. So. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a whole bunch of crazy tasting soon. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers.